Hello and welcome to Royal Black and Elite. I'm Lady Trinette Wilson and I am a social historian and lecturer. And each week we come by and just talk about black history from a different point of view, from a royal point of view. And we travel all around the world to find interesting uh, elite blacks, royal blacks who live a different experience from what we're used to when we hear all the time about slavery. So today, I have a very interesting story. We're going to go to France in this episode. And next year, I'm so excited because my Etiquette Association is taking a trip overseas uh, to Paris and to England. And so I am so excited. So it's always interesting to hear stories from that area. And today is no different. We're going to visit with a man who sent his uh, he was an enslaved man and he sent his once owner to the guillotine. Join me as we meet Zamora and learn about his absolutely fascinating story. So let's set a little groundwork. This is during a time in France when one of France's longest reigning kings was in power, King Louis the 15th. They called him Louis the Beloved, but his reign when it was filled with a lot of intrigue and also setbacks. He lost the Seven Year War and he had to cede France's American colonies to Britain and Spain. You see, they were colonizing all around the world and France was no different. Some say he was a terrible king and his poor rulership ultimately led to the French Revolution, which took place, well, which actually began in 1789. Now, like kings of the time, he had a mistress. He was married to a woman named Marie Lachinska, and she came from royalty. She was the daughter of the disposed king of Poland, and she was also the granddaughter of the French kings, King Louis the 16th, Louis the 18th, and Charles the 10th. She reigned for 43 years, and she had 10 children with her husband, but she was not the apple of her husband's eye. Despite her deep devotion and unwavering commitment to her marriage and to France, the king's heart belonged to a woman named Madame Dubarry. Now, the madame was the illegitimate daughter of a seamstress, and she was educated at a convent, but she was turned away from the convent when she was only 15 years old. Now, she was a good seamstress, and so she worked at that. She sold jewelry on the street, but after... Um, several jobs, odds and ends, she ended up um, connecting with someone who actually made her a courtesan at the uh, I, at Paris of Versailles. And that's how she hooked up with the king. Now, she reportedly had other lovers and she was even married, but she was the king's main mistress. So despite beginning her life in squalor and living on the street for many years, the king worship this woman. I mean, look at her living arrangements. I mean, she lived in absolute beauty. Uh, she had no wants or needs. She entertained as if she was his wife. And so there's the background of, of, the, of the madam. And they together would entertain each other. And so one gift that he gave her uh, was the gift of Zamor. Now, the king was the king during the French Revolution, so there was a lot going on, especially during the reign of terror. And there was a lot of uh, treason and speculation about treason going on. So this was a very volatile time. So as a child, he was given to uh, Madame, the Madame, and the Madame would really kind of treat him terribly, actually. Uh, he would say that she would demean him. She would use him as a spectacle and as entertainment. And he, he was very insulted by the way he was treated by Madame Dubery. And so because of that, it grew hate in him for her. And during the reign of terror, he became a member of the Jacobin Club. Now, the Jacobin Club was a political party. And they were laser focused on anyone who they deemed to be against the monarchy. And so he served on a committee called the Committee on Public Safety. So Zamora had grown up now and he was politically active, um, but he still was serving the madam and he was still enslaved. He did not like that. So 
you know, there was a lot of revolution going on. Um, they were, people were being, um, you know, fighting against slavery and some more was as well. So he did not like this woman at all. And because he served on this com committee on public safety and listen, they control the government. They had really given the government had given over their power to this committee. And they were, um, you know, jailing people for their speech. They were jailing them for any reason. They were passing all kind of laws. And so Zamora was right in the middle of all of that. He had great political power, but he wasn't using it for the positive. In fact, he was using it to hurt because he actually accused the madam because he didn't like her and how he treated her, him of helping refugees who were trying to flee French, France during the French Revolution. He also accused her of stealing some valuable jewelry. Now she was hot. I mean, I mean, living, okay? And she just, after she discovered that it was a Moor who was accusing her and he was also writing pamphlets about it. And so she dismissed him and gave him three days notice. And after she fired him, he went right on across the street to that committee of public safety and accused her of all of these things. Now, the first time she was, she was able to kind of avoid the trouble. So even though she went to uh, jail, she was able to avoid getting, you know, getting in real trouble because she was a powerful woman and they gave her a reprieve, but that didn't matter. In 1792, the Tribunal of pra Paris, acute, again, Zamora at work, accused her of treason, and she was sentenced to the guillotine. And up until that point, she had really lived a very charmed life. I mean, King Louis took real good care of her. She didn't even know why she was in trouble. She couldn't believe what was happening to her. And on that day that they took it, took her to the guillotine, and it was December the 8th, 1793, so they weren't even worried about a holiday. When they took her to the guillotine, she actually was still begging for mercy and crying and falling out. She was in shock. And the king didn't even step in to help his number one mistress. And she lost her life that day because of the accusations of Zamor and because the public did not like her. They wanted her gone, and they wanted her gone fast, and they accomplished their goal. Now, I'm sure Zamora was very impressed, even pleased, by his handiwork, because he did not like that woman, until he also was arrested and accused of helping the matter. Now, he was able to convince of the tribunal that he had nothing to do with it. He was not involved with her helping the refugees or a stealing the jury or anything. So they let him go. He hightailed it out of Paris as quick as he could, but he was unable to really ever able to financially get back on his feet or even capitalize on the political relationships that he had once built through the Jacobin Club. Um, of course, um, because they were disbanded and things happened with them as well. You know, it's kind of sad because he had freed himself from the mockery of the madam, but then he had locked himself out of the protected privilege that he once enjoyed. Sadly, he passed away penniless in 1820 at only 58 years old. No one attended his funeral and his body is believed to have been thrown into a mass grave. What a sad end to a sad life and a demonstration that um, revenge never really works. You really get the brunt of it because you suffer all those years and then you do what you think is going to bring you relief. And here he lost everything as a result of it. Um, he didn't lose, you know, his head like she did, but he lost a lot. And, you know, these are all many interesting stories. It's in my book, Royal Black and Elite. I want to thank everyone who's gone already out to purchase it. The second edition is coming out in February in time for Black History Month as we keep the conversation going about him and so many other interesting people that we've met here as I share with you on these episodes. Now listen, I want to share with you another one. Did you know Marie Antoinette? She had a black adopted child and what happened to him after she was guillotined? Listen, we have story upon story around here.
And I want to thank you all for liking, sharing, subscribing, liking my community. I've been trying to do the community page and putting posts. Y'all, thank you for watching every week and tuning in for another great episode of Royal Black and Elite.